In this video, we'll look at the idea of optimization, which is about finding the largest and smallest values of a function on an interval. When many people buy a car, they think about its fuel economy, how far it will go on a gallon of gas. One thing that many people don't realize is that your fuel economy is affected by the speed at which you drive. In this video, we'll examine the relationship between fuel economy and speed, and try to find the speeds that will give you the best and worst fuel economy. The Argonne National Laboratory has developed a system to simulate a mid-sized car driving at highway speeds and to predict the fuel economy. So, for example, they found that when the simulated cars were moving at a speed of 55 miles per hour, they had a fuel economy of 45 miles per gallon on average. In this table, we can see what the largest and smallest values of fuel economy are. But the table only gives us data at specific speeds and it's possible that the cars might have a higher or lower fuel economy at speeds that are between those displayed at the table. To get a better sense of the patterns in our data, let's look at a graph. This graph shows the data points in the table. To get a better sense of the patterns in the data, we can add a trend line. And we can also find a formula for this trend line. This shows the equation for the function f of s, fuel economy as a function of speed, measuring fuel economy in miles per gallon. Let's temporarily remove the data points from the graph and just look at the graph of the function. So our goal is to find where the fuel economy is largest and smallest. The largest value will occur somewhere around here, where the graph hits a peak. This happens when f of s stops increasing and starts decreasing. Let's take a quick detour to remember something important about derivatives. It will be important to think about how a function is related to its derivative. You probably remember that when a function is increasing for particular x values, its derivative has positive y values. When a function is decreasing for particular x values, its derivative has negative y values. When a function is constant for particular x values, its derivative has zero y values. And if a function has a cusp or a jump or something strange happening for a particular x value, then the derivative isn't defined. So, keeping this in mind, let's return to that graph of fuel economy versus speed. We know that the fuel economy will be largest at a speed where f of s stops increasing and starts decreasing. And in calculus terms, this is when f prime of s switches from positive values to negative values. To figure out where this happens, let's compute the formula for the derivative function. f of s is a polynomial function, so we can use the power rule here to get f prime of s equals 0.007s squared plus 0.438s minus 4.035. And this is measured in miles per gallon per mile per hour. Let's look at a graph of f prime of s. Here is a graph of f prime of s. Here are some values of s where f prime of s is positive. So when the car is traveling at any of these speeds, each additional mile per hour will increase the fuel economy. And here are some values of s where f prime of s is negative. So when the car is traveling at any of these speeds, each additional mile per hour will decrease the fuel economy. And so when we switch from increasing to decreasing fuel economy, this is when we'll find the maximum fuel economy. In this case, this happens when the value of f prime of s is zero. When f prime of s equals zero, the value of s is called a critical point. To find the value of this critical point, we would need to set f prime of s equal to zero and solve for s, either using the quadratic formula or a computer. We'd get s equals 50.252 miles per hour. So for these simulated cars, the fuel economy is maximized when traveling at a speed of 50.252 miles per hour. We can mark this s value and see this on the original graph. Here is the graph of fuel economy versus speed and we can see that it hits its maximum value when the speed is 50.252 miles per hour. Now, what about finding the minimum fuel economy? The minimum fuel economy should occur when f of s stops decreasing and starts increasing, or, in calculus terms, when f prime of s switches from negative values to positive values. However, in this scenario, there isn't any speed where the fuel economy stops decreasing and starts increasing. Instead, we can see that the fuel economy is lowest at either the smallest speed value we're using or the largest speed value we're using. 
These are called endpoints of the interval of speed we're looking at. To determine which of these speed values gives us the smallest fuel economy, we can either look back at the data in our table or use the formula to compute the fuel economy values at each of these speeds. For 45 miles per hour, the data give us 43 miles per gallon. And at 75 miles per hour, the data give us 32 miles per gallon. Thus, we'll have a minimum fuel economy when we're driving at 75 miles per hour. So to summarize all of our work, optimization is when you want to find maximum and minimum values of a function. The maximum value will occur when the values of the derivative go from positive to negative, and you might also need to check the endpoints of the domain. Similarly, the minimum value will occur when the values of the derivative go from negative to positive, and you might also need to check the endpoints of the domain. The places where the derivative switches between negative and positive are examples of critical points. These are places where the value of the derivative is zero or, potentially, undefined. So, to find all of the potential points where a function has a maximum or minimum value, you would identify all of the critical points and endpoints, then see which of these are maximum values and which are minimum values.